Hey, welcome back to the next video. Um, so in the last video you saw we cut out everything for the lake here and the waterfall and we got this all ready to go. So I went ahead and I finished this up. What I did was I caulked all around the edges here and then on the back side I did the same thing. We're caulked and sealed all the way around. So now <clears throat> when we go and pour the, the water epoxy in here, this is totally sealed. The only thing we'll need to do is a, is a dam right on the end here like we did on the other river series. And that'll all get done the same way as that. We'll put a dam here and we'll fill this in. So we're good up to that point now. So now the next thing we need to address with this are the ends here. We need to fill this out to the edge of the plywood here. So we've got to fill in this end here on both sides. So what I've got, so I got a two by four and it's cut to size and what I did was I set it in here like this and then I just trace the markings where I need to cut so that I know where I'm cutting off. And we're going to run this through the table saw and I'll do one on each end and we're going to glue it and screw it in there. Okay so there we go. This is all put together now. Now we just need to let this dry. So I, I've got the ends clamped. We're all clamped up here so that the fascia glues to this piece we put in. It's all screwed. Both sides are done. Now we will just let this dry for a couple hours. Okay. So now we're back and we're going to start removing removing these these boards here. We've got one on each side that we've got to take out because we don't need these anymore. So that's what we have. And like I said, I'll, I'll do a tape line across the, the, the upper part of that and we'll do it. It'll look neat and clean. And So that side's done. And we'll come over to this side. And this side is done as well. So now it's just a matter of letting all that dry and then we can come back and tidy up the paint and then once this is all good to go then we can start fitting the bridge down in here and start working with the hinges and getting that hinged up. Today we're going to start the next part of this bridge thing here. Uh, you'll have to excuse the little bit of shakiness. I don't, I don't have my tripod today but uh, what we're going to do is we're going to attach the bridge here to the layout. I've, I've finished machining all of this. I'm sure that right here the bridge will pass by. It'll drop down just fine. Um, so the next thing to do is to hinge this up. So what we're going to do is we're going to come underneath here and what I have, I have it clamped up right here to the layout and then I have a continuous hinge that I'm going to use to, to hinge this together. So um, as soon as I get this screwed in, because I can't hold the camera and screw this together, I'll come back and I'll show you what I've got. Okay, so there we go. After a bunch of fitting and poking and prodding, we finally got this to, to hinge up in there. And this will be fine. This will work out just fine. Um, now we're going to, the only thing I need to do now is put some catches up on up on this other side here we're going to put some latch or latch that goes a slide bolt two slide bolts on this side and that'll hold lock this into place when this goes down like this i want to put an eye hook and this will hook up all the way up underneath like this and it'll be right up out of the way where nothing can hurt it so yeah that's that's the idea so what I have is a, a gate latch that holds this, uh, this whole uh, bridge up when it's not in use. So all you got to do to put it up is we'll unhook this and this will swing right down and come right up this side. And then underneath here, you can see I have two slide bolts and I put two only because it's 12 inches wide and, and I don't think one's going to be enough. I want to make sure it's going to hold in there good and solid in place. 
and then I have the center eye bolt in there for the gate latch. Okay, so the, the, the next thing we have to do with this is I have to notch two spots over here, okay? And normally what I would do is this is the plate that goes with the slide bolt and it would go right here and you just cut a small notch. Well, because we're doing what we're doing with the electrical here, I need to add these pressure switches, which I have right here. Um, so these are going to control when the bridge is up. So what's going to happen is I'm going to route a space in here for these to mount this way in here and then this plate covers right over the front of that perfectly and then what's going to happen is these will be in here like this and when you slide the slide bolt in the slide bolt will push on the switch it'll, it'll push this down and make contact and that will power the tracks and when you when the slide bolt is out the, the switch releases and it cuts the power to the track that's how that's going to work and I have one for this this track and one for the other track I have two of these for this side but I have to get the router out and I have to router in the groove the same width as the switch here so I can mount this switch it actually needs to go up up here it needs to be up here and because I need to access wires in the back I'm gonna solder these ahead of time obviously so I don't have to deal with it in there um, I'm just gonna router it straight through all the way up and that way I can get to everything whenever if I ever need to and what I've done now is I've added the slide bolts right there so now the bridge is latchable so now it stays in place and I put two in here because of the width I just want to make sure that it's not going to wobble or anything and I want it to stay good and strong and stir sturdy and then what I did was I cut these notches up in here okay so on this side you, you can see actually what I've done and, and I've, solder, I've, I've cut <clears throat> I used the router and I cut out these notches and then right up in here is where those micro switches are going to run so these are the micro switches right here and I soldered two lead wires on and I had to do some searching around to figure out exactly how to wire these and, and come to find out they're marked there's a common uh, a common tab uh, normal open and normal closed so from best I can figure and I'm hoping I'm right I think I am is I went to the common and then a the normal open so when this is up it'll break contact to where my wired bridge is and all the stuff up on top and then when the bridge is, is in place it'll push down on this and it'll it'll resume contact and everything will be powered and the way those are going to go is they're going to sit in here like this and they're going to bolt right up into place right here and then what will happen is when the slide bolts come through right here they come through this tab and then they will push down on this and they'll automatically run that in there like that and then these will hook into track power and that'll that'll do everything just exactly the way I want it to go and we do one for each track because it's a it's a it's a double line that the, the bridge is on and I want one for each track which ensures that I'm going to have to it's just a safety for my own peace of mind that I know if both tracks are working I know both latches are thrown and, it, and, the, and the bridge is in place the way it's supposed to be if there's a track that doesn't work means I missed a latch so that's where we are with that part of it so the next part now is going to be to obviously to bolt these up into place and start getting the wiring done um, Okay, so now above the layout, uh, here's the bridge, and we can put it up in place. And then when I push this up in, I push one, one slide and then the other slide. Now this is totally in place. It's locked down. It doesn't go anywhere. It's very strong. 
So what I've done here is I started working on hiding the gap that goes down through here. So first of all, I took uh, some of this, more of this pink foam and what I had was there was a gap between the, the, the wall right here, the, the back of the bridge, and here there was, a, there was a gap. So there would have been a gap in here. So I cut more of the pink foam and you can see it overhangs the plywood a little bit. So when we move this up into place, it goes right over the over the gap and it covers that right up. Gone. And then I took more balsa wood and I run a piece across here, I super glued it in. And then what I did was I sanded it with a block to fill in that gap. So now there's no gap and it's it's a pretty solid fill. And then I did the same thing at this end. See when it when it goes down, the foam overhangs just a small amount here, and it just needs it's it's not quite dry yet, so I have to let that dry some more. But I, I started shaping this one, and and then see, and it'll hide that. And I did the same thing with the balsa wood here to cover up the gap. So there's hardly any gap showing at all, which is beautiful, and it works absolutely gorgeous. Nothing touches; it's just fine. And then we can close the gates all locked in and then of course you know the waterfall part you've seen and I also have some ideas here uh, I remember I told I showed you when when I first started this about how the tracks were overhanging I had them overhanging they were getting broken you know and I was afraid things getting caught on these edges and people you know a sleeve would catch it and rip the rail up I have some fixes for that so stay tuned I, I've got some things to, to to get that worked out we won't ever have that problem yeah, so that's, so that's where we're at. So until next time, stay tuned, and we'll talk to you later. Bye.